This week on TGC News, Crimson Trace gets optical, a new AR lower that doesn't suck, and a brand new cartridge for the Desert Eagle. Tactical Baby Gear offers some of the coolest diaper bags, baby carriers, and day packs for the mom and dad that love freedom. Whether it's the Deuce 2.0 diaper bag combo with the bottle and dump pouches, the Day Pack 3.0, or maybe just the Tactical Teddy, you are bound to find something that works for you and your tactical baby. Also available are the new bulletproof panels that are level 3A Kevlar soft panels that fit inside either the backpack or diaper bag. To get squared away and get 10% off your order, use the code TGC10 at tacticalbabygear.com. Welcome back to another episode of TGC News, the only gun news show that covers things you actually care about. My name is John Patton. Let's jump right into it. First up this week is a new one from a company you've probably never heard of. Shield Arms is a company out of Montana that to date has focused on pistol accessories like mag extensions and aftermarket slides. We actually did an unboxing on the shield parts for Adam's M&P Shield a while back. Well, now they've come out with something really interesting. It's called the FLR or Folding Lower Receiver. Prior to now, you would have had to buy an aftermarket folding adapter to get your standard AR-15 to have a side folding stock. Something like the Law Tactical Adapter or the Deadfoot Arms Package. The Law Adapter will cost you about 250 bucks, the Deadfoot about 430 for their entire package. What Shield has done is integrate that side folding mechanism into the actual lower itself. It takes a standard buffer tube in stock. No extra adapters needed. I think this is fantastic. Why? because options are a really, really good thing. You could either have a standard lower with an adapter or an entirely foldable lower. Off the bat, the Shield Arms FLR will be available in nine millimeter options called the SA9 as a stripped billet lower for $399 or a complete pistol with the SBA3 brace for $1499. Now, here's where things get really interesting. I came to find out that this FLR design isn't just going to be offered by Shield Arms. You guys have heard me talk about New Frontier Armory before, and yup, they're the ones actually manufacturing these FLR lowers for Shield Arms. I'm not going to get into the ATF variant stuff that allows this to all work, but the long and short of it is you'll actually be able to get a slightly less fancy looking version of the FLR from New Frontier as part of their C5 MP5 mag lower lineup, the C9 Glock lower, or the C4, which is a standard AR-15 lower. The price on a stripped lower from New Frontier, 100 bucks less, 299. And that is the key. I think the best you could do to put together the law adapter and a forged lower would be right around the same price point. And I don't know about you, but I'd rather have a nice billet lower over a run of the mill forged unit. And then you think of the cost of most nine millimeter lowers and things get a little bit more expensive by comparison. Both the Shield Arms and the New Frontier offerings are pretty rad if you ask me, but you guys know the drill. I want your input. What would you rather have? A standard AR lower with an adapter so you can keep that standard part? Or would you rather have a lower with the folding mechanism built in? Sound off in the comments below. Our next story this week is something that gets me really really excited. If you guys have been following for a while, you'll know that I have a mild obsession with big and stupid guns. And for the same reason, I love the Desert Eagle. It's loud, it throws fire, and it's one of the least practical handguns that you could own. However, that's what makes it incredible. The history of the Desert Eagle starts in the 80s and calling it complex is putting it mildly. The roots of the Desert Eagle go back to 1979, when two men decided it was time to create a semi-auto pistol that would fire the 357 Magnum. First, let's just consider the size of the Desert Eagle. It weighs more than four pounds, so it would take two 1911s or three Glock 19s to match the Desert Eagle's heft. Shifting manufacturing between Israel and the U.S., different variations of the gun, 10-inch barrels, 6-inch barrels, and a multitude of like really wacky finishes. Most folks know this as the big 
50 cal handgun, but it's been offered in a few other cartridges for quite a while. The longest running options that I'm aware of are the 357 Magnum, 44 Magnum, and of course the 50 Action Express. Years ago, it was also offered in 41 Magnum and a lesser known cartridge called the 440 Corbon. Yes, that Corbon. The 440 Corbon was a 50 AE case that was necked down to accept a 44 caliber bullet and sling it downrange at about 350 feet per second faster than a 44 Magnum. But the fact is that round didn't catch on. I'm not really sure why, because I was 14 when it came out. When I first heard about the 440 Corbon, I was like, oh my God, oh my God, this is so cool. I gotta have it. And then I quickly found out that it was virtually unobtainium. There's no ammo and there are very few barrels available in that cartridge. Fast forward to now, and there's a new Challenger that takes a similar form. The 429DE is here. It's basically the same concept as the 440 Corbon, but uses a slightly different angle on the shoulder of the case. They're claiming about a 25% increase in velocity, about 1600 feet per second with a 240 grain bullet, and a 45% energy increase over the 44 mag with the same projectile. So what we have here is a hot rod Desert Eagle cartridge with some serious velocity and power. There really isn't much to compare it to because anything close to it in power is designed for a revolver. This is a semi-auto pistol that slings a 240 grain bullet downrange at 1600 feet per second. A standard 45 ACP slings a 230 grain bullet downrange at a little more than half of that velocity. Holy crap, yes. I want one, yes please, yup, yes, I want one, uh-huh, let's do this, I'm in. Normally I'd ask for your opinions on something like this, but on this one, I'm covering my ears and going la 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 la. You can't triple stamp a double stamp, Lloyd, you can't triple stamp a double stamp, Lloyd. I don't care, I want it, that's it. It's, it's a 429 desert, I don't care what it is, I want it. <laughs> Rounding us out this week, Crimson Trace, best known for making pistol grips with freaking lasers in them. Gonna have laser beams. Watch me shoot laser beams. Has just announced an entire line of optics. Yep, I didn't see that one coming either. There are a ton of different products here, so we'll come at it from kind of a 10,000 foot view. We can break it down into two groups, the electronic sights and the scopes. In the electronic sights, which is basically red dots, we have five different options, including a three and a half magnified red dot, a tube red dot, and three variations of a reflex style sight that all appear to be kind of the same thing with different mounting options. In the rifle scopes, we have 11 different options. They have been broken down into three categories the two series the three series and the five series not to be confused with bmw oh yuck i think you guys can all figure out that the two is probably the most affordable all being priced at under a thousand dollars and the three is kind of your mid-tier which goes from about a thousand to twelve hundred dollars and then the five series which is about fifteen hundred to two grand the interesting thing here is that Every tier has an option for most people's needs, whether it's low magnification or very high magnification. They kind of all have a little bit of everything, which in my opinion is pretty cool. Obviously, the thing that really matters with an optic is the optical clarity and the function of the dials. Does it track properly? Things like that. So without actually testing them, it's hard to say if they're worth the price. But as I've said many times before, having options is a good thing, and with a name like Crimson Trace on the side, I would hope that they hold up over time. What do you guys think? Do we need another optic company out there, or is this just a filler product to get the Crimson Trace name on the side of your gear? TacPack is an enthusiast subscription service that is focused on bringing you stuff you need straight to your door on a monthly basis. Every month is different and you can be met with gun parts, accessories, cleaning gear, or even some bigger and cooler shenanigans. And because you're watching TGC, if you use the code TGC knife, you'll get a free folding knife, TGC tool, and you'll get a free pocket size multi-tool. And TGC grip will get you a free AR grip. Only when you punch those in over at TacPack. Com. And it's time once again for Friendly Fire, the segment where I answer your questions from 
all over social media. Our question of the week prize pack this week is again brought to you by Pew Pew Tactical, but it's a little bit different. We're stepping up to a 16 inch 556 fax and barrel and a t shirt. Check out Pew Pew Tactical, link in the description. First up this week, Jacob Becker on Patreon says, What are your range pet peeves? The biggest one is other people. 99% <laughs> of my range time is trying to film stuff and other people complicate that but when you belong to a sportsman's club that kind of comes with the territory and most of the guys at my club are really nice guys anyway so not a big deal facebook user anthony bauer says do you think rifles should be shipped in a hard case versus a cardboard box especially the expensive ones personally i don't ever use those hard cases that come with rifles but it is nice to have on the more expensive stuff yeah I, it definitely has to come in one of those hard cases when it comes in cardboard you kind of feel like something got left out right I feel like I got robbed. YouTuber Ant Pasalasco says, how can shooters of different sports help each other to enjoy the various sports? I think the answer there is simple. Invite people out to your match or whatever you're doing, give them gear to use and let them shoot. The most intimidating part, in my opinion, is dealing with the rules and not really knowing what's going on. So walk them through it and be there to help and guide. Show them why it's fun and why you enjoy it. That's how you break down walls. And our question of the week and winner of the Pew Pew Tactical Prize Pack with a t-shirt and a 16-inch 5.56 barrel is Adventuring Troglodyte. What a name. On Instagram, he says, what do you look for in a trainer slash training? Great question. We get asked about trainers and training quite a bit. I personally look for someone that can speak to me and my needs. I don't feel the need to go run around and do barrel rolls with a rifle. And sure, that would be fun, but that's not my primary need. So I like guys that can speak to me like I'm a human and educate me on how to handle situations that I might run into. I also really try to avoid range theatrics that have potential to get people hurt. I'm not into that. I just want a simple class that makes me better. If I'm out there taking a class, I, I don't want to leave there just being a better shooter, but also a better American and a better Better person in general. Great question. Send me your info so we can get you that barrel. My friendly fire question to you guys this week. What do you think is the next big advancement to happen in firearm technology? You guys ask me this question all the time. I want to know what you think. And hey, if you want your question answered right here on TGC News, send it to me over on theguncollective.com. You guys know the drill. If you didn't like this episode, hit that button. If you liked it, hit the thumbs up, subscribe if you want more, and of course, check the links in the description to find out about everything we talked about today. And hey, if you want to watch last week's show, click here, and as always, thank you all for watching. We'll see you soon. At about uh, 300, oh, sorry. Holy crap. Yes, I want one. Yes, please. Yup, I'm in. That's it. I'm, I'm, I'm down. Damn it, I messed that up. Having too much fun with the Desert Eagle thing. The shirts worn in today's video on the Gun Collective have been provided by Patriot Patch. Closed captions have also been brought to you by Patriot Patch Company. Be sure to click the link in the video description to check out all of their great products, including their cleaning mats.